Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With the angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Night and life to all He brings Risen with healing in His wings Mild He lays His glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King King of heaven come down King of heaven come now Let your glory reign shine like the day King of heaven come King of heaven rise up Who can stand against us You are strong to save Your mighty name King of heaven come Christ by highest heaven adore Christ the everlasting Lord Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King King of heaven come down King of heaven come now Let your glory reign shining like the day King of heaven come King of heaven, rise up. Who can stand against us? You are strong to save in your mighty name. King of heaven, come. A blessed Advent to you and welcome to worship with us here at St. Luke's this weekend. We are in a season preparing for the coming of Christ, God's promised Messiah who would come in the flesh, who will return someday, who comes among us even now with his gracious promises. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for making worship a priority for you. Um, thanks for walking together with this community of faith. If you do me a favor, I'd love to know that you're worshiping with us. I'd love to know that we're still together in this. If you have the Church Center app on your phone, um, you can check in for worship. Just a, a simple way of saying, I'm here, we're here, we're, we're doing this together with you. If you don't yet have that app, you can go to our website and download it. If you have any questions about that, just call the office and uh, a number of staff members would be happy to, to walk you through how to get that set up on your phone. 
Um, as, we, as we worship today, um, a few announcements I want to let you know about. Our, our Advent series of Prepare Ye happens both on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings. Um, you, can, you can worship from home uh, like this. If you want to worship with us on a Wednesday evening, we're streaming those live on Facebook. Um, if you're considering joining us on site for any of those services, we ask that you please register ahead of time so that we can manage capacity well. Uh, we also have a number of Christmas Eve options for worship. Uh, we will have services here on site at 3, 5, 7, and 11 p.m. on the 24th. And again, for capacity's sake, please, please register ahead of time. We are committed to having as many services as we need. If the 3, 5, 7, and 11 fill up and we need to have more services, we'll do that. Um, we don't want to turn any away, anyone away from hearing the good news of Jesus and the birth of our Savior. But in order for us to plan well, uh, I'm asking you to plan in advance and to register sooner than later. Um, pick a service and commit to it. Uh, make it an intentional priority. Uh, we will be live streaming those as well. And so um, if you're not able or safe or comfortable to um, participate in an on-site worship service, that's, that's okay. We will continue to bring God's word to you uh, right where you are. Um, as we receive the gifts and promises of God, we also want to be generous towards others. So once again, we are having our Mere Lake Christmas Mall. We are providing um, gifts for people in our community who might not otherwise have gifts at all. And so there are a variety of ways that you can um, support us in that endeavor. Uh, there's a, a list of, of specific needs that are available at the church office. You can call or email anytime. Also, if you go to our website on that rotating banner, you'll see it. Um, we've got an Amazon wish list set up so that all you have to do is click the link and, and it takes you right to the things that, that we want to purchase for the kids. And so you can click from there um, and it'll ship it right here to St. Luke's. So we, we make it really easy for you. You don't have to leave your home in order to be a blessing in our community. So we need all those um, donations here by December 16th so that we can have them um, wrapped and distributed in time for, for Christmas for our community. So those are, those are the announcements. Um, uh, we begin our, our service now calling upon the holy name of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for your word, for your life-giving word that speaks truth, that speaks the truth of your will, that corrects us where we have failed, and, and as your Spirit convicts us through that word, Lord, um, you gift us with repentance. And so we gather today as your repentant people, turning from, from the errors in our thoughts and our words and our deeds, trusting in Jesus, that because he died for our sins and because he rose and lives even now, we have access to you as your perfect sons and daughters through faith. And so we come before you trusting the work of Jesus, trusting your word of promise. And we're bold to pray for ourselves and for others. We, we pray for a speedy end to this pandemic. We pray for health for those with, with concerns and struggles right now. We pray for reconciliation among families and friends where there is conflict. We pray for consolation and comfort among those who mourn, who are alone, who are isolated. God, we pray for hope in the midst of a dark and broken world, hope not only that you are active even now, but, but hope in that last day, Lord, when you will make all things new. Until then, Lord, preserve us in hope. Preserve us in the true saving faith. We pray all this in the name and for the sake of Christ, our living Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The reading is from 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 6. We read, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all 
who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading this week is from Luke 1, 5-25. We read, In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all of the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zacharias said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As a body of believers, we are united in, in, in our hope and our trust in who God is as God makes himself known in Scripture and chiefly makes himself known in Jesus, the incarnate Savior. So this weekend, uh, we are going to confess our shared Christian faith in the second article of the Apostles' Creed that focuses in on Jesus. And then we'll have a, a brief moment where we, we articulate and speak together what we believe about that. And so we, we confess. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, 
This is most certainly true. This is what we believe. We, we believe that we have life in Jesus, and we believe that life in Jesus is not something to keep for ourselves, but it's God's will that, that all people would come to the knowledge of the truth and so be saved through our enfleshed Savior. And so I thank you for your partnership as, as we, as a congregation, um, not just pastor staff, uh, not just official leaders, but we, all of us together as the body of Christ in this place, we are faithfully proclaiming that word, uh, not only in, in services online and on site and, and acts of love like our Christmas tree, but, but through discipleship of, of all ages, teaching God's word in a variety of capacities, meeting human needs in our, in our community. And we couldn't do it without you. So whether it's mailing in a check or texting in a donation or setting up a one-time or recurring gift online, thank you for your partnership. And may God continue to bless us with the message of life and would would the name of Jesus be glorified through our uh, faithful partnership. Thou long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find ourselves in thee Israel's strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dearest desire of every nation joy of every longing heart born thy people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now the gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit ruling all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious throne come thou great redeemer come emmanuel bless the name with your presence here born our souls to rescue born to save our very own long expected Jesus make our hearts your own come thou long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel's strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dearest desire of every nation joy of every longing heart Come now, great Redeemer, come Emmanuel. Bless the nations with your presence here. Born of souls to rescue, born to save our very own. Long expected Jesus. Make our hearts your own. Come now, great Redeemer. Come, Emmanuel. Bless the nations with your presence here. Born our souls to rescue. Born to save your very own. Long expected, Jesus, make our hearts your own. Come thou long expected, Jesus. Come 
And our long expected Jesus Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our coming Savior and Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen. Descended from Aaron of the tribe of Levi, the priest approaches the temple of God, first entering the outer courtyard, that, that tent that surrounded the temple proper. Out in the open air, the priest walks past the first altar, that altar where animals are sacrificed continually to atone for the sins of the people. Next, he passes by a giant basin of water that that is used for for washing and cleansing. And then he, he enters into the temple proper, That temple that was dreamed of by King David, that was built by King Solomon, that temple that was rebuilt after the exiles returned from their captivity in Babylon. Now once in the temple, the priest looks to his left and he sees the menorah, the the brightly burning candles that, that are illuminating the room inside the temple. And then he looks over to his right and he sees the showbread, the the bread of the presence, the 12 loaves that were set before the very presence of God week after week. And glancing around inside the temple, the the priest sees the space. He sees the the walls that are carved with with engraved figures of cherubim and and seraphim, the the mighty angels of God alongside images of of trees and blooming flowers. It, It looks like Eden itself. It looks like the perfect creation overlaid with gold. And as he continues forward, just in front of the curtain, that, that, that veil that, that separated the holy place from the holy of holies, that, that holy of holies that was reserved only for the high priest, and only that one day a year, just before that curtain, that curtain that was adorned with images of, of the heavenly bodies, before that curtain was the altar of incense. The altar of incense as close as any priest would ever get to the very presence of God, was the altar of incense. With resin from various trees and plants, often mixed with with fragrant oils, upon the altar of incense there was the slow burn and the faint glow as steady smoke rose up, filling the room the holy place of God with a fragrant aroma, not only bathing the priest in its luxurious scent, but but wafting up to the throne of God as a pleasing aroma to the Lord, a fragrant offering from God's devoted people. And the people of God would sing the words of Psalm 141, O Lord, I call upon you, hasten to me, Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, as the pleasing fragrance of incense rose from the altar unto God's very presence, so the prayers of the people of God are received by God himself as a holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, 
who will answer them all according to his good will. As the pleasing fragrance of incense rose from the altar into God's very presence, so the prayers of the people of God are received by God himself as a holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, who will answer them all according to his good will. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. I'd never read the story of Zechariah the priest through the lens of prayer before, but prayer, like pondering, prayer is one of the ways we can prepare for the coming of Christ. Now, I knew the story of, of Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah was married to Elizabeth. And like so many saints of God, even in their old age, they remained childless. And Zechariah, he was chosen to go and serve in the temple, something that, that an average priest may never get to do, or, or maybe, maybe he gets to do it just once in his lifetime. And, and if you remember the story, while Ze Zechariah was, was doing his priestly duty, the angel Gabriel shows up. It's, it's the very same angel Gabriel who will visit the Virgin Mary just six months after this episode. And Gabriel says to Zechariah, your wife Elizabeth will have a son. And, and, and Zechariah understandably says, how can this be? I'm old. Elizabeth is, well, she's, she's no spring chicken either. <laughs> and, and Gabriel, Gabriel the, the angel of God, says, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I was sent to bring you this good news. And you know what? Since you didn't believe me, no more talking for you. You, Zechariah, won't be able to speak a word until your son is born. And Zechariah leaves the temple, unable to speak. Now, I, I, I knew the story of Zechariah. I was familiar with the story, but I never read the story of Zechariah the priest through the lens of prayer. Before. Specifically, verses 8 through 13. Verse 8 says, Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, verse 9, according to the custom of the priesthood, he, Zechariah, was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Verse 9, what was Zechariah going into the temple to do? To burn incense. Verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. While Zechariah went in, notice what's going on outside. A whole multitude of people are gathered around the temple. And what are they doing? They're praying. And specifically, when are they praying? They're praying at the hour of incense, the time when the incense was offered. Verse 11, And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Where did the angel Gabriel show up? On the right side of the altar of incense. Verse 12, and Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. So Zechariah, Zechariah doesn't need to be afraid. 
In fact, the message from Gabriel is that, that Zechariah can rejoice and be glad, right? And, and why? why? Why can Zechariah be, be glad and not afraid? Because of the, the promised baby, to, to be sure. But, but before that, before we get to the baby, Gabriel says, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Why? For your prayer has been heard. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, as the pleasing fragrance of incense rose from the altar into God's, into God's very presence. So the prayers, the prayers of the people of God are received by God himself as a holy sacrifice acceptable to God, who will answer them all according to his good will. God answered Zechariah's prayer and Elizabeth's prayer and the prayers of all the people of Israel as they prayed for deliverance and salvation. The baby John would grow up to be the forerunner of Jesus. John was filled with the Holy Spirit even, even from his mother's womb. John would be the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye, right? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. John, John the Baptist, born of Zechariah and Elizabeth, John would turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Prepare ye that they would be a people prepared. We want to be a people prepared. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. You and I today, we, we, don't, we don't have to burn incense. We don't have to make animal sacrifices to atone for our sins. You and I, we do have access to the very same God. The God who chose to dwell in the temple. The God of angel armies. The Lord of hosts who dwells in inaccessible light and absolute holiness. We have access to this God through the sacrifice of Jesus that sacrifice made on the altar of the cross. The Old Testament priests had to appear before God on behalf of the people over and over and over and over and over again. And as they appeared before God, they would make sacrifices first for their own sins, and then they would make sacrifices for, for the sins of the people. The priest would continually make sacrifices and, on top of that, they had to keep replacing the priests because the priests in old age kept on dying. But Jesus, the incarnate, the crucified, the resurrected Son of God, Jesus holds the priesthood forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for you. For Christ has entered, not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now, to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We don't pray to God through incense. We pray to God through Jesus. And through Jesus, 
our prayers are as delightful to God as incense. God's, God's not bothered by your requests. He doesn't barter with you based on your behavior. God's not arbitrary in responding to your prayers. No, through Jesus, through Jesus, he delights in your prayers. He's worshipped in your prayers. He hears and receives and answers your prayers in joy through Jesus. As the pleasing fragrance of incense rose from the altar into God's very presence, so the prayers of the people of God are received by God himself as a holy sacrifice, acceptable to God who will answer them all according to his good will. Let my prayers, let our prayers rise before you as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice through the sacrifice and the love of Jesus may it be so amen receive the promised blessing of our God the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week. Hear the angels sing this hope for everyone to announce our King this hope for everyone what good news they bring this hope for everyone angels sing this hope for everyone they came from the farthest hope for everyone wise men saw the star this hope for everyone shepherds turn the choir there's hope for everyone from afar there's hope for everyone we are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness bending low to be among Your glory in the highest, Jesus. Come, let us adore. There's hope for everyone on the manger floor. There's hope for everyone. What are you waiting for? There's hope for everyone. Come, adore. There's hope for everyone. We are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness, bending low to be among us. Bring your glory in the highest, Jesus, coming on the clouds. There's hope for everyone. The trumpet sound this hope for everyone. All the heaven shouts this hope for everyone. On the clouds, there's hope for everyone. We are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness. Bending low to be among us. Bring your glory in the highest, Jesus. We are waiting on the promise, Jesus. For the one who lights the darkness, Jesus. 
bending low to be among us. Jesus, bring your glory in the highest. Jesus, all of heaven shouts this. Hope for everyone. Heaven shouts this. Hope for everyone. Heaven shouts this. Hope for everyone. Heaven shouts this. Hope for everyone.